Real, real recognizes real. That's why you and me are doing business together. Yeah. I know your friends don't necessarily like me. I know you probably get shit for our relationship sometimes. But you know that I'm real. You know that I tell the truth. And you know that I'm passionate about cigars and that I'm trying to usher in this. Not trying to. We're ushering in a new wave of cigar smokers that fucking love your work. There's nobody can tell me how to run my business. I run my business and I pick and choose who I do business with. And there's nobody alive going to tell me who I can or cannot do business with. I've been through too much in my life and I've had too much struggles in my life for somebody to come and tell me. You understand? So, you know, people need to stick, stay yeah. in their lane and do what they want to do. And I don't knock nobody, you know. That being said, I do appreciate the fact that you never wavered on our relationship when I know for a fact that you've definitely gotten a lot of phone calls about th certain things over time. I think all those things are dead now. Yeah, Water good. under the bridge. Good. We move on. Right. But I don't fold. I don't fold for nobody. 100%. I've been through too many in my life and I don't fold. I, I, 100%. So we're here right now with Eric Espinosa, cigar maker extraordinaire, uh, Cuban, Miami. Tell us about, I want to get a different interview on you this time. I know you don't. I feel like you may not like, you know, opening up a little bit about certain things that aren't just cigar related, but I, I want you to, I'm asking you to, and hopefully you'll oblige. Tell me about where you come from. Where were you born? When did you reach Miami? And how did cigars play a role in your life way before you started making cigars? Truth is, um, I hated cigars. Hate it. One of the things I hated the most in life was cigars. Why? Because I laugh at what's happening now because you see a lot of people, hey, ever come to my house, I just build a man cave in the back and come smoke. <laughs> when your whole house should be your man cave. That's how I was for my dad. Okay. My dad, the whole house was his man cave. You know? definitely I, don't, I don't understand those things. My dad was smoking in the, in the bathroom, in the living room, in the bedroom. It didn't matter. So the combination... Uh, well, my dad had his own construction company, uh -huh. and I also hated the Cuban coffee because the vapes of the Cuban coffee is so powerful that the combination of the smoke and the vapes, my mom would make the Cuban coffee. Wow. Because we, having his own construction company, he'd leave at the same time we did, uh -huh. going to school, okay. and he'd come back around 3, 3.30 right. when we got back from school. So... I mean, so he, this is in Miami, smoked, though. This is Miami, yeah. Okay, so you were born in Miami, or you? No, were born I was born in Cuba, but like we, you know, we how came old over were you when you got three here? Three months. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, so you were really okay. So you've out, been here your whole life, right? And then, um, so but he was always smoking cigars. Oh, my, he's eighty-seven right now. You'll never see my dad without a cigar in his mouth. My dad's wow. Uh, remember, we had an operation, and the, and the first thing, you know. Uh, they take all the tubes out, and he looks at me, and he, and he goes like this, and I'm like, I swear to God, it's true, I swear my life is true story. You know, he needed the nicotine, you know, yeah. and I'm like, Dad, you can't right here, you know? We got to get you another room. And I did. I got him a cigar. He didn't light it up, you know, but he just needed to chew yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's a chewer. So Yeah, you've told me, I've heard this. Being yeah. a chewer, you know, you'd walk by my dad, and he, you know, and he'd go like this to you. With, it looked like a paintbrush, a cigar, because he chewed it. And he go like this, and you're like, you know, you're going like this. And he do that to my sister. You do that. I guess he didn't want us to smoke cigars. He didn't want. And then um, one day I was 15, and my brother and I, we stole some beers and, and some cigars. We were getting banged up and smoking and, you know, and never got sick. Yeah, I never got sick with a cigar. Huh. And I kind of liked it, you know. Yeah. And, and they were BS cigars. They weren't even premium. They mm -hmm. were, you know, stuff you'd buy at the, ga at the gas station, liquor stores or whatever. And then every party we just, and then it just, it just started. It just started. I mean, I smoked maybe three, four, five cigars uh, a year. Right. When I was fifteen, you know. And then sixteen, maybe ten. And when I was seventeen, maybe twenty a year. And then eighteen, all hell broke loose. You know, when I turned eighteen, uh, yeah, I was driving a, a truck for UPS, but they would call me cigar because I always had the cigar. Now you, I wouldn't smoke it yeah. because you, you would have to go in and out of the business. Yeah, you yeah. Didn't have time to smoke it, but I would always leave it in my mouth, and. Um, and now look at me now. I mean, sometimes you look back in life and you say, how did we get here? 
And um, it's just mind-boggling to me how something that I just hated so much yeah. growing up. And uh, So, and now, you know, 18 years old, you're a driver for UPS. Yeah. Where does your career go from there until you start actually making cigars or getting into the cigar industry? Like, how did that transition? Well, from regular job to in the cigar business. I, and now you're in Miami. You're in Hialeah. I'm, 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 yeah. So I, I... And for those people at home that don't know, Hialeah is... It's like in the heart of like Miami. It's, it's Cuba. It's Cuba, Cuba in little, America. Little, 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 little yeah. Everyone there is from Cuba. Yeah. Or their parents are from Cuba. And all the Cuban traditions, the language, the, the cafecito, the cigars, it's all there. It's sort of like being transported to a... A version, an American version of Cuba. It's amazing. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, you, you, the number one language in Hialeah is Spanish. I mean, you can't get away without speaking Spanish. <laughs> you can't get away. <laughs> can't get away without speaking Spanish. Uh, uh, and then I, out of high school, I went to college for three months learning how to, um, I wanted to get into computers, learn mm -hmm. how to fix computers or what have you. But uh, we had a seminar three months later and uh, some of the guys who graduated came back, and I I didn't care about where they were working. I cared about how much they were making. So back in the day, we're talking about 85, I kept asking, how much you make an hour? Oh, $10. You, $12. I ain't going to college to make $10, right. $12 an hour. I know it was different times. So I had the opportunity to work for UPS, and of course I got t tired of that. And uh, and the best thing that happened to me, uh, um, you know, uh, and I'm, I always mention his name, and and, and I saw Christian Eroy in a, in a cigar shop, and he needed a rep in Florida. Huh. How old are you around I, this time? I, I had to be about 27. Okay, so you're in a cigar old. shop yeah. in Hialeah? At, no, in Pembroke Pines. In Pembroke oh, Pines, so like I, I, north of, yeah, that was north your, Hialeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so you, 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 you run into Christian Eroy. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Are you talking to him, or is he just like standing up, like, "Hey, I need a sales rep"? No, he he was talking to the owner of the shop at the time, or the manager, and, and they were talking. He needs a sales rep. And, and, and this is the time where he owns Camacho Cigars. Him he and had his just family. Started. He had just started. He had he had come from military school, and he had just started the the, the business, the Camacho. Yeah, it was called Carib at the time. And so uh, I told him, "Look, uh, I'm available," uh, um, and I was on vacation, so I told him, I "I'm available." The vacation for UPS, um, and uh, I could give it a shot, whatever. Kind of okay, it just happened one thing, all right, you know, this and that. So I had like, I got a couple samples, and then were the no cigars list. as good then as they are now, or were they better? The ones that he, that was, he was selling then. Well, the, the number one brand at the time was Baccarat, which had a flavor, uh, 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 had a sweet tip. Uh huh. But when those Camachos uh, first came out, but he, it was in the transition phase because the guy Camacho who owned it, I think they had bought the brand from yeah. him and, and something happened to him, you know. Uh, he had passed away and then they took the brand Camacho, but they still had some of the older stuff that the guy had made. So you had the older boxes and now you got the newer boxes coming in, the combination. But those, and I tell everybody, those liberties and those... Uh, um, I, I, I don't, 1118s mm -hmm. and all those, uh, they were like outstanding. I mean, I'll tell you some of the best cigars, um, you know, it's the truth. I used to, you know, I used to hide and I used to steal some from, not steal a box, but I mean, <laughs> his own stash, you know, I'd go grab a cigar <laughs> from him. You know? Hey, who's smoking my like cigars? Like I do at like, your office. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. who's smoking my cigars, you know? But yeah, they were, they were flat out delicious, you know, kudos to him, you know? I always give him credit, you know, for helping me get in, yeah. in, in, into the business. He you speaks know. highly of you too. No, he's he, you know, he he's a, he's a good guy, and I always I never forget where I come from. One thing I uh, that's about me, you know, anybody who has helped or helped me, and Lord knows I've had some dark days in in this industry, and I've never forgotten anybody who's helped me get to where I'm going, you know, and and the people that get in my way, I just try to crush them because that's yeah. just the way. Because if not, they're gonna try to crush me. That's just the way I, I, I look at life. <laughs> So you run into Christian Eroa, he offers you a job, or you volunteer for a job, and you start selling cigars. What are you doing now? You're going around from shop to shop? From shop to shop in Florida. South Florida? Well, no, the whole state of Florida. So, I, and I didn't know nothing about sales. Um, but I was always sharp. I, I was never, you know, I, yeah. And um, I remember I go into the shop in Jacksonville, no appointment or nothing. I walk in, and a guy, sort of a hard ass, uh, Look, I'm the new sales guy for Caribbean Porter Cigars, yada, uh -huh. yada, yada. And uh, he tells me, um, do you have an appointment? 
I said, no, sir, I don't have an appointment. And, uh, well, I don't see nobody without an appointment. I saw he had a Rolex watch without the date. And I had one of those. I bought it a long, long time ago. It was black phase. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it. I said, look, we got the same watch. And I'm trying to get conversation yeah. with the guy. And the guy, I don't see nobody without an appointment. I said, okay. So I walk out the store. These old, uh, it wasn't the brick phones, but something a little bit better than the brick phones. But it was a long time ago, back 20 some years. And I called the guy in the store. And I said, uh, this is Tobacco Cove. And he goes, hello? I said, yeah, hi. Uh, there is Eric Espinosa from Caribbean Porter Cigar. I would like to make an appointment to visit your, your shop. He says, okay, uh, are you the guy who just left here? I said, yeah. He goes, okay, okay, fair enough. When do you want to make the appointment? Two minutes from now. <laughs> and, and, like, I'm here, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm in Jacksonville. I drove this whole way. So he says, get your ass in here. You know, and then that's how I started, you know. That, and the guy opened, gave me an order, and, and then I started rolling. And then with three months being in the company, I, I he sort of uh, I became the sales manager of the company. So I traveled throughout the whole country just training guys and, and, okay. and, and getting the sales guys. Going how long did you work uh, at Camacho? I don't remember those things, man. I, Years? I, well, be, then I became a, after I, I went abroad, I... After I, I traveled the whole country, um, I got tired of it, and um, I wanted to spend more time with my son, so I wanted to become like an uh, independent broker in Florida. Okay. So I still worked with him, not directly with the company, but I was an independent broker, and I carried their brand. I did Bahia, I was doing uh, Indian Tobacco before it became Rocky Patel. Uh -huh. And then I had so many people call me, the Drew Estates. Did you hang out with that dude, Paul, who's who's like a very famous independent broker? He's no longer with us. Peter's yeah, he, brother. Oh, yeah, Paul was my brother. That was my brother. We should stay together. Such no, great he, oh, to my say God. about that guy. No, Paul was, Paul's was my boy. I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't give the eulogy, at, 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 but it's sort of, a, you know, I got everybody together yeah. and we talked. Yeah, that was my yeah. boy. Good, a lot of good, people good, have good No, good people, good, 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 great guys. So, okay, so now you become an independent broker, and I'm imagining at some point you go, I should just start my own brand. No, <laughs> I, I never wanted that. <laughs> really? Listen, I was making tons of money when I tell you tons of money. Really? I was making, this is the 90s boom? I was making, oh. <laughs> I was making more money than most owners. I'm telling you. People don't understand that, Eric. They, they, they don't understand. They, they, they think that there's yeah, so much yeah, money. Yeah, it's yeah, like, no, dude, once uh, you own the company, you... I you made more revenue. money as a broker than I've made as a cigar owner. And I don't care what nobody says. Now, I have a company worth a lot of money. Of course. But, but, you know. So, I was making F.U. money. I'm telling you F.U. money, okay? I was getting checks. You know, I had about six uh, cigar companies, bundles, uh, lighters, cigarettes. I would sell... Uh, I would sell cigarettes. I would sell these uh, flavor cigarettes, uh, Nat Sherman's of the world. Yeah, and I had my sister at a garage. I sold two million dollars out of a garage. Just wow. Yeah, because I had the whole state. You couldn't cross lines with cigarettes sure. because of the stamping. So Sam Pornas, the clove cigarettes, it was just booming. And, and then here we go. I get a. I win salesman of the year, and I get a check for twenty grand for salesman of the year and a pink slip at the same time. I'm like, what is this? And I'm not gonna mention the name. But um, I'm like, dude, how do you fire the guy who made you the most amount of money? And, uh, well, I can hire somebody with less and this and that. And I said, there's no such thing as an overpaid salesman. I'm on commission. The more I sell, the more you make. And it just, it, it, it pained him to, to, to make those big checks. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Me, no, it happens. Yeah, Even yeah, with me, when yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah, I have yeah, some yeah, people yeah. here that I've seen grow from, and it's like every once in a while I look back and I think my father would never have paid this guy that money. But you know what? My father wouldn't be where I am right now because right, right, right. his so, ego would have allowed him to, so to stop that. I said, okay, whatever, no big deal. I'll, uh, I'll get another brand. And I did. And then the same thing happened. And then I said to myself, I have no job security. And, and the, w whenever, I got no contract with these guys. Whenever they don't want, for my hard work, I help build them. It's a combination. They worked hard. They made great sure, cigars. Sure, of course. And then I, I got no job security. So I ventured out. I, I met a guy in a cigar shop, Eddie Ortega, and, and then we did the oh, e e e we did oh, the EO brands. So much to talk about here. We, we did the EO brands, and... Uh, 
and we had one of the hottest selling cigars in the so country. So did you guys partner on this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he, was he making the cigars and you were selling the cigars? No, it was a combination. We both blended. He, he, okay, he okay. Had, so tell me about Eddie Ortega. Is he no longer in the business or he's a sales rep somewhere? Now? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think You don't speak to him state. anymore? Well, I, I have nothing. No, I have nothing against the guy. I, we, we, you just don't talk a lot. Well, right. Like for his birthday, I, I'll, I'll reach out to him. Sure. Some, I don't dislike the guy. Okay, uh, so I'm s just starting to get into cigars. And I find out what Padron is. And you know Izzy that used to work at Smoke Inn? Yeah. Okay, so he's over here now, yeah. Waterford. Okay, so I meet Izzy. This is like, I don't know, 13, 2013, 2012, somewhere in there. And, and I, he, he said, oh, you like Padron. You should try an Ortega. It's basically the same thing with less age. And I said, oh, okay. So I start getting really into Ortega. And then he puts out the Wild Bunch and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are legendary fucking classic cigars. So you were involved in that? No. Okay. No, I was not involved in the Ortega. The, okay. The, 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 okay, so that, or the wild that happened later. We already had separated. He already went his way, and I had to go my How way. How long did you guys stay together for? Uh, we were about six, seven years. Okay, so almost a full decade. Uh, um, close to. Half, half a decade. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and what was the brand called? 601, which today happens to be June 1st. How ironic. It was called 601. Um, it's meant to be. We we had the six one. We started with a, actually we started with another brand, um, and then we had a, a lawsuit with it, and, and then we started the real vibe. It was called Series X, and then uh, uh, we had a lawsuit with that. Then we did one called Real and Vibe. I can, I'm guessing. Yeah, that. All right, yeah. I'm not gonna get into that. R real okay. Vibe. Which real Vibe. Real. It uh, was one called Real, and the other one called. Oh, vibe. you're so ahead of your time now. Yeah, Everyone dude, talks so, about vibes all the time. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then Rocky was making those. Uh, okay, so Rocky Patel's making the cigars. Of the, what year is this, around? I have no idea. 2001? I, I, I don't remember. Uh, 2000? It could be, yeah, around, around Somewhere around that, I'm guessing, yeah, yeah, based on 2000, my 2000, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. So, okay, so Rocky Patel's making it. Now, at some point, you're in Gae Ocho, you run into Don Pepin. At some point, you guys no, work together. No, no, I, I used to... So when we're doing okay with the real vibe, so I used to sell for a company called um, Kojimar, which is a flavored uh, cigar. Okay. One of the hottest selling flavored cigars. Uh, and um, coincidental, um, Eduardo Fernandez buys out uh, Tropical Cigars, which they had uh, Don Juan and uh, Cacique, a, a lot of okay, brands so, that were doing. So this is... This is Casa Fernandez just coming off their pizza money in Spain. They just sold all their, their big chains, that, that, and now he wants to get into tobacco, and he's buying everything. It could be. I don't know anything about the okay. pizza thing, but uh, um, he buys out Tropical. Well, that's which, where he came right, from. Which happened to, be, happened to be right across the street from each other with one little road in, in, in between. In Miami it, or in Nicaragua? In, in Miami. In Miami. Okay. So I go to the Kojimar and I see this man rolling cigars uh, in front of Tropical. Well, it's no longer Tropical. I think it's called Casa Fernandez. And, um, and I, he was just doing it fast. I, I like the style. So I said, you know, when I leave this place, I'm going to go see him. And, um, and then I, I forgot. And I went home and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, it kept bothering me. So I said, tomorrow I'm going to go. And I did. And I went and I spoke to him. He made me a cigar. He goes, look, this is something, you know, this is tobacco they gave me. I wouldn't make this, but, you know, yada, yada. So he's using so Aganorsa tobacco. We, we, we exchanged. I, I don't know if he had Aganorsa tobacco he was, at the time. But he was there. He was there, yes. He okay. was working right there. Um, I don't even think Eduardo was growing because it, when Eduardo started growing, he had some tough times with the, the, the rapper. Uh, right. It, it, it wouldn't burn, you know. Which now, a lot of, of course, people don't realize, when you start a tobacco farm, you can't get you, wrapper you, out of it you, for you, three you, years? You, for, for a while, but you, you, you learn as, as, as you go. He's got some of the best tobaccos in the world right now. If not, if not the best. It's um, arguable. It's top three. Uh, uh, no, no, it's, it's definitely he, you know. But but you you learn from your mistakes. You know, sure. you know so if he wasn't, and then Especially and then when he you're started, that smart, and he started. Pro, yeah, I heard he go. He went to Warden. You know. I, by the way, I have a great relationship. He, he he's a great. He's a, a brilliant great, guy. He's a brilliant guy. So he learned from his mistakes. He started growing some of the best tobaccos, and um, and then um, 
I, I guess he, I don't know all the details, but if I was to guess, partnered up with uh, uh, with Pepin. They went and they uh, opened up a little factory in Little Havana. Right, on 18th Street? Or right. On 8th Street, I'm and sorry, 8th Street. 8th Street. Right. And, and then we, we, we uh, and then when they left out of there, because the cigars were too expensive, when they left out of there, when they partnered up in Nicaragua, um, that's when we started the 601s. It was Eddie and I, so we did the 601, the blue, the red, But you're, the green. I feel like you're kind of skipping over that time on 8th Street, though. Didn't you make any cigars no, with them there? No, it was too expensive. Okay, but Padilla and Pete Johnson. And Pete Johnson would make cigars. They were right? making cigars yeah, yeah, there. But yeah, you were yeah. around this crew. You were, like, I feel no, like... No, no, because I couldn't... I, I couldn't... I, I didn't see paying, you know, like three, four dollars wholesale for a cigar, you know, and then I was just doing the math and, and you got to double it. And if I pay four dollars, I had to sell it for eight. The stores had to sell it for 16. And, and it was People just think too, everyone too, was making millions of dollars and it was off just, cigars. And, and, it, was just just, and it was just too expensive and, uh, uh, at the time. But I did tell them, if you ever go to Nicaragua, call me. And they did. And, 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 and we started, uh, that's what we started. One of the f first brands they made out of there were the 601s. The, uh, the, we started with the red and the and the. Do you still have any of those around, or no? They're all gone. Um, I, I don't. I, I see some once. But you don't while. personally. No, no, no. You don't hold on to cigars. Why? Once you're in the business, they start flowing no. through your hands so much that it's like... I mean, not to change your conversation, I'm in Cincinnati. A guy goes, hey, Eric, I've been aging this for 25 years, Cuban cigar. I want you to have it. He gives it to me. What do I do? I go like this, I bite it, I spit it out, I light it up. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. Dude, I've been, I've, been, I've been aging this for 25 years. Well, you want me to age it for another 25? I mean, what, what do you want me to do? I mean, how long do you want me to keep it? You're not Dude, a collector. No. I, what, a, what am I going to collect cigars? You know, and I tell everybody, by the way, the longer you age a cigar, the weaker it gets. It loses a lot of flavors. Now, it marinates better, but if you like strong cigars... There's why, an expiration date. Why, yes. To some degree. It's not wine. Right. It's not nothing near wine. Even wine, some people say, well, has an expiration date. I, I, I can't date. talk about that because I, I, okay. I, I, I don't know anything about okay. wine. Okay, but I think we're all in agreement there that for me, a three-year aged cigar, if it's not good at three years, it's not going to be good. No, and, and why? And, and look, all these guys that collect bourbon, leave the bottle. I mean, when you're done drinking it, leave, hey, I had, a, I had a Pappy Van Winkle 15. Uh, trust me, the bottle's there. I mean, what are you going to do? Look, I'm 55. I, I, I don't I know how long. more clout, like, yeah. look at what I got. It's so odd. I mean, you only I, live more time. I think people love collecting. I am one of those people. I have collectible things everywhere. So you're a hoarder. Not a hoarder, not a hoarder. No, because let me tell you why. I feel as though the things I collect are almost, they're not almost, they're investments to a degree. Okay, fair enough. I have so many baseball cards that I get, and I gave them out to my son. Uh -huh. And my son's a huge baseball kid, but he gives three shits about the cards. Right. And I don't know how much money we have sitting on there, but they're like, they're not even kept well. They're not They're, they're in the closet yeah. and, all the, and all the BS. Okay, but all right, so, okay, so, so now Don Pepin moves to, but you were already making cigars with Rocky. Yes. And Rocky's king at this point. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. By the time he, he, I got he, into cigars he, around he, 2010, he, Rocky was he's the puff already, daddy. Yeah, of, yeah he's okay. already doing well for himself, yes. Is it is it fair to assess him as the puff daddy of cigars at, at 2012? He's like, like I would walk into shops, it would be like posters of him. He's going to be here and he's wearing suits and he was like yeah, doing the whole yeah. thing, you know? I mean, you know what, dude, the truth is? Marketer. What, no, no, one thing about me is, is if, if you've worked hard for what, what you have, uh, okay, Rocky is one of the most uh, hated and I loved. I know nothing and about loved. Rocky. Hated and loved. I'm talking about the social media at the same time. He's a uh, good friend of mine, uh -huh. okay? And uh, I'd do anything for the guy. Uh, I know all his suffering, all his, uh, his tough times, his, struggles. his black days, his struggles. Uh, he has some dark times. Huh. But I will tell you, nobody has ever worked harder in this industry wow. than he has. And I mean harder, I mean by being on planes, traveling. It shows. Uh, uh, going to Nicaragua, going to Honduras, going, uh, you if, know, I did Rocky some of the with him. not the most popular brand, I, I, I don't know I, what I, it is. I, I, you know, I, I did some of the stuff with him. So he deserves everything that, anything positive happens, he deserves it. We all get what we deserve in yeah. the end. <laughs> I, I would so, so, no, mad respect to uh, Rocky Patel if he ever watches this. Um, 
So, okay, so you, so you're still with Rocky, but this guy Pepin, yeah, was he already an older gentleman at this point? Uh no, I, I, maybe fifties, maybe yeah, fifty, sixty. Okay, probably. and he had just come from Cuba before yeah. that. Okay, yeah, and so now he goes to Nicaragua, mm -hmm. and he does call you. Yeah, well, when they were going, he told were you me friends they were at this point? Well, yeah, because I we we I, I'd get him some. Uh, I remember we did a. Uh, a uh, boxing it was Don King Monday Night Fights on HBO, and my cousin was uh, she would handle the whole event, and she needed a couple rollers, so I got him to do that, you know, for them to make extra money and what have you, and and then we continued talking. Okay, so you guys are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever speak to him now? Uh, no, I mean we we've gone different ways, sure. but I got no ill feelings no, 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 or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. know, they're mostly down in Nicaragua. And Fucking I empire really, now. Yeah. So. Um, now you start making cigars with him, but this is after he stopped using Aganorsa tobacco. So in the beginning, the Padilla. No, no, no. no, no. He's still using. He's still using Aganorsa at this point. Sure, they're partners in the factory. Okay, but at some point that ends. Well, that I don't know. I was no longer with them when that happened. I don't know. That was know. 2007, from what I understand. Uh, I, I'm horrible years. Okay. You know. Okay, but, but when you, I stopped making the cigars at the factory. Uh, I, I don't know what happened after Where did that. you go from Pepin? I opened my own factory. Okay. And this is where... Um, this is 11, uh, like 11, 12 years ago. When okay. I, when I started, when I opened up the own factory. Okay. And your own factory, uh, you met another senior gentleman, older gentleman, yeah. that had a small factory, and you helped build this thing into well, something. Well, no, I... I um, we had a, a, a guy, a milk car, who uh, is Rocky's partner now in the factory in Nicaragua, and um, he called me up one day and he told me, look, I want you to help my cousins I have here. And I said, help them what? Can you buy some bundles for them or what have you? So I did. Mm -hmm. And then I helped them out, whatever the price was. I got them, I sold them, no big deal. And then the gentleman I sold them to called me like a month later. Yo, Eric, you have more of these bundles. What bundles? I didn't even remember where they were. And, uh, Oh, dude, these things are great, yada, yada, yada. And I didn't even try them. So I went to the shop, and I grabbed a cigar, and I'm looking at it, triple cap, you know, Cuban style. And the blend was great. The cigar was good for a bundle. It was, it was the best bundle cigar I ever had. And, um, and I reached out to Amica. I said, who are these guys? Oh, they're my cousins, blah, 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 blah. So I said, can you set up a meeting with me? And he goes, yeah. So I went down to Nicaragua. And they were renting a little section inside a factory. That wasn't theirs. That's how a lot of them start. So, uh, hit, hit, uh, son, father and son. So, and I sat down with them and, and, and you know, I kind of picked their brains and I told them how you'd like to open up a factory. And uh, I'm a firm believer you got to let people make money and they'll respond. And, and I didn't want to be greedy. I could have owned this whole thing myself but I, and just have them run it. But um, if I'd done that, then... You know, I wouldn't be confident with that because I feel they'll be stealing from me and sure, and it's not theirs and all that. So I told them, we'll break this down 50-50. And they said, well, we got no money. And I said, I, never, I didn't ask you if you had money or not. I said, how would you like to open a factory? And we did. We found this beautiful old colonial building, uh, La Zona. And um, that was 11 years ago. And, uh, and we've had so many cigars in Provada Cigar Club, in Farm Road, yeah. in all of the clubs and the shops from La Zona. It's a well-established factory. Miracles. I mean, we performed the miracles because no one wanted to give us tobacco. And, and, and uh, you know, we were the new kids on the block. And if it wasn't for AJ and if it wasn't for Les Kudos to Drew Estates, because Drew Estates hadn't sold yet. And Jonathan and Marvin, they, they helped me tremendously. Eduardo helped me, uh, um, Placencia. I mean, you know, but the other guys didn't want to see me succeed. So, okay, if you buy 10 bales of this, you got to get 10 of this. Mm. And what am I going to do with the 10 of the of bad that. ones? And a lot then, of that in this game. Yeah, so, and, 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 and I kind of got... What, what other brands have you made out of Lazona? Well, I've made a lot of brands, and people have been, they, they start off the gate, and they're very successful. Here's the issue that I've had with some of these guys. Uh, I, I made one, uh, Cornelius and Anthony. Phenomenal. A highly regarded brand. So Yeah, and they're up here. And then he sells the company, the cigarette company, for, uh, I, I mean, rumor has it was $250 million. So what does he need cigars for? So he just told me, look, I'm going to get out of the game. 
and um, and wow, and that that one kind of bothered me. It hurt because it, it, everything worked well together. It was perfect. Because when I was doing the Larange, I needed someone to make the darker Larange and and that rapper. And we were doing the Daddy Mac, and they were selling it. Daddy crazy. Mac is so good, aka and, and, Purple and, Drink. And, you know, <laughs> and and um, for all my Provada heads, aka Purple Drink, great sweet cigar. I mean, how you get that sweetness out of a San Andreas wrapper is just it's unbelievable. So so, so and then the uh, we did we did the protocols. Now I do a lot of brands for um, uh, you know CI famous. Uh, a lot of these catalog companies. We do a lot of cigars. Amendola? Amendola also yep. did the Amendola, the, the cannolis. We the do, cannolis we, were great. We, we, we had those in the club we, too. We, we do the cannolis for them. Uh, um, yeah, I think they came in number three or two or something like that on the list or something like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, um, yeah, that is correct. A Amendola. Okay, so. And we did, hold on. We did the uh, Warzone for General, okay. which. I, I think he got number 11 cigar of the year, cigar for Senado. I couldn't say 11, 12, I don't remember the number, but cigar. yeah, yeah, so we, we, we did that. And um, I mean, for us to get that rating, the accolade in cigar for Senado. Without for, paying for it. Yeah, I mean, for a brand that we made for the biggest company in the world, that was, so, that was great. The next phase of your career that I want to talk about, or not the next phase, but the thing that that I think is enamoring about you or is um, attracts people to you is you're a real people person and you bring people together, yeah, okay? And you also were, in my opinion, like the first, you were kind of a little bit of a, of a catalyst or and it wasn't just you. I think Drew Estate did a fantastic job of this too. But you built a community of consumers around your cigar brand, yeah. around Espinosa. Uh, you have the uh, La Zona Fest at the factory every year. Um, you know, there's, 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 uh, there's. You don't just have people that like Espinosa. They become family. Yeah, family. It's family. Yeah, you've built a real community. I mean. You know, I always wanted to give props to everybody who's posted my cigars or bought my cigars throughout the year. So every year we do is called La Zona Palooza. We do it in the, in South Florida in the warehouse, and because um, we can't find a venue, because it rains so much, and I've done things outside, and I, it was I, a I cluster. Mean, I, I mean, I, so I, the problem I, is finding a venue. Yeah. I'm sure you've struggled with. We're, we're doing Provadacon do. on November fifth, and it has been a nightmare. To right. Find the right. So, so, I um, we do it. I, we do it more at the same time. You do it November third, fourth, the first weekend in November. Um, I will change that next year. I didn't realize that. No, I'm not you having know. it this year. Okay. So oh, you do not. No, because we already did it in March. Remember okay. I told Great. You to go Great. That's right. That is right. Okay. I will do it again in November. That was okay. always the date. I'll push mine yeah, back. Yeah. No over worries. Back. I'm not worried. So we um, I want to uh, you know pay homage to to all these guys who and and girls who've posted my cigars you know for the longest time and everyone tells me though you always invite the same people yeah it, you know it, it warrants for me to invite them their family their, their family and, they're the people and, and that are making this it. thing work and one of my greatest moments in the in the cigar industry is I'm doing an event in uh, Philadelphia and um, I walk in and uh, I look to my left and I see a guy named Mark Davis who lives in West Palm Beach and I said, Mark, what are you doing here? He said, I flew for your event. I said, you came all the way from Amazing. West Palm for my event? He goes, yeah. And he's a guy who goes to La Zona Palooza. And then I look, and I see another guy, Jeff Todd, and I'm like. And you know him by name, and I said, like Jeff, I do. I, love I said, Jeff, what are you doing here? He said, dude, I, I, I came to your event, and he lives in Maryland. And I'm, do you guys know each other? Yeah, we met in La Zona Palooza. It's amazing. Isn't I'm, it amazing? I, I'm staying, I get goosebumps. He goes, Isn't I'm, it gratifying? I, 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 like I, it, I'm, I'm staying at his house. I'm like, wow. And that day is like, look, I swear. I, look, I know. I get, no, I trust me. It happens to me all and the time. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I, I did this. I, I, I bring, you did. I put people together. You did. And, uh, and then it becomes family because I open up. I open up my office, people walk and roam. You know, we hide everything of any paperwork, whatever. We, we close everything up, whatever. But 
you know, I let people roam around. They, they, you know, and I, the first thing I tell everybody, if there's somebody here you don't like, stay away from them. Right. You can drink all you want. Uh, you can smoke all you want. But if you start bothering somebody because you're drunk, then you got to go. And you can come back the next day, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I just don't want nobody. People paid, you know, their hard-earned money to get there of course. And, and, and vacation time. But I tell you, this year was the best. I mean, this year was absolutely. We had Guy Fieri there. Went by. Okay, so tell me about the project with Guy Fieri called Knuckle Sandwich. Sandwich. Yes. So I. Um, and you've been friends with him for a long time. I've been. Fr we've known each other. Now we're friends. I mean, before we known each other. So, but before he reached out to me through a, a mutual friend uh, uh, that he wanted, but he had done his research. Right? He knew everything about me. He's no dummy. I mean, he did his research. We met in South Beach. Uh, it was the Food and Wine Festival. We go out there and um, we start talking, and uh, and he wants me to create a cigar. And, and I told him, man, it, it, I I don't feel this will work. And and at that time, the entourage came and uh, his people, and and he had to leave. And and I'm like, I get in the car, and he goes, look, we'll, we'll talk later and I get in the car and I'm like I'm a dumbass I mean I just and I told my son he goes dad are you crazy this and that but I didn't feel, so he called me and he asked me why did yeah. I tell him no I said guy with all respect um a lot of celebrities have tried this and it doesn't, doesn't work. work you know isn't that amazing? you've had Michael Jordan I tried it a long time ago. You, you've had Jay Z, uh, uh, Gary Sheffield, uh, Chuck Norris, Jim <laughs> Belushi, uh, the Milkman, uh, uh, the Milkman. He's doing it now. Big Poppy, and he asked me why it doesn't it not work. Big Poppy, it works because United pushes the hell out of that. Well, maybe in Boston, right? Because that's where I've heard from. that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, but you know, unless you do something about it, it's not going to work. Right. And he goes, Poppy, you don't know me. He says, I don't fail nothing that I do. I, I, I give it a, a, a thousand percent, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I, you know, I, and I said, so he asked me, what's your ideas? I said, okay, I'll follow you in diners, driving, and dive. You tell me where you're going to be. I'll schedule an event, okay, and you do it during the day, and at nighttime, I just need you for an hour or two. Yeah. Sign some boxes, whatever, and then you, you go so. do your business. I'll stay, and, 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 and he said, okay. So the first one we did, you know, we... I sent him a bunch of cigars, and we were going to go down to Nicaragua, but due to COVID, we couldn't do it. Yeah. So I sent him a bunch of cigars. We went through uh, 20, 30 cigars. Uh, which one do you like? Which one? So uh, the, my team, you know, his guys, he's got a couple guys that smoke cigars. And, um, and you know, this is the, the two blends we did, the Habano and the, uh, by the way, they're selling that gangbusters there. You know, he wears the shirt and diners driving and dive. You know, um, every event we have, he, he lives he, it. He does a little video, and he, I think that's does. why some of the celebrity stuff doesn't work because they don't live it. They, they don't live it. They don't do nothing about it. Yeah. He'll he'll do a video for every single shop that we've done. Wow. I mean, we send them and wherever he's at, he can be in. And he uh, seems the, like the, a great uh, guy. He he he's a trip. He I I can't keep up with him. This guy does no drugs. I, I'm telling you, people think no drugs. This yeah. guy's straight. This guy, he drinks a little bit, but energy. at this energy level, I worked out with him. I'm pretty strong. Yeah. The dude can outlift me. I can, wow. and, and I don't normally say that. I'm not yeah. thrilled to say that. Like, oh, I don't like to lose in nothing that I do, bro. But I'm working out, dude, and I'm, I'm, and I'm seeing him, and I'm, you know, I, I got, you know, 45 pounds doing curls, and, and he's got 55s. And I'm like, all right, let me get the 55. Like, this guy's not going to outshine. I'm like, <laughs> He's doing boom, boom, and I'm like, what, the, you know, and, and um, you know, but his, his mentality, and everything he touches turns to gold, and I noticed that, because Sammy Hagar told me that one day, because they're partners in, in a tequila that's uh, Santo Tequila, and he said it's the best business partner I've, I've ever had, and, and we did it on a handshake, and I told him, I don't want no attorneys, no nothing. I said, you have to believe in me. Wow. And he goes, why don't, you know, here's a guy who makes millions. He's not going to make a lot of money in the cigar. He right. knows that. But I looked him straight in the eye and I shook his hand. And he goes, I, I believe in you. I've heard nothing but great things about you. And we did it. And I, you know, I, it is what it is. We're 50-50 owner on, on the brand. Wow. And all we have is a handshake. But everything I've asked him to do, he's done. You know, uh, 
Not in a timely fashion. I mean, because he kind of <laughs> scares me sometimes because we're supposed to meet on a Monday and I called him for two weeks. I got no response. But he was there Monday. Yeah, wow. I was nervous Sunday, but so <laughs> he okay. Was there so Monday. so you, but you guys did the opening in Puerto Rico. Yeah, and everyone told me why. You, which uh, Lou was Lou there. went down there. Yeah. yeah. So everyone said, well, why would you do the grand opening, uh, the, the launching in Puerto Rico? Because that's where he was at filming Diners Diner Driving Drive. and Dying. Right. And I was a little nervous because being in Puerto Rico, I don't know if a lot of people knew who he was in Puerto Rico. So I was a little nervous. Oh my God! So I'm doing this event in the biggest shop, and and you know who's you? So I called the lady. I, I, I told her, you know, we want to do an event, a joint event. She goes, I don't care about no chef. Now, she doesn't speak English. I don't care about no chef. I, I want you here. Your cigars do great here. I want you here. I said, okay, Rita. And then the son calls me. Uh, who's the guy? And I tell him, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. Blah, 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 blah. So she calls me like at 9 o'clock at night. Eric, this guy's real famous. I said, yeah, I told you, Rita. And he goes, I got people already coming from Chicago telling me the whole table is New York. Blah, 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 wow. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So the guy from Chicago came and bought like six boxes. Wow. Just because he wanted to meet him. It was his yeah. favorite show. Yeah, yeah. So he flew all the way from Chicago to Puerto Rico just to meet him. And, Puerto um, Rico's great, isn't it? Yeah, the, How about the food? The, the food there, the food culinary. Is phenomenal. Is, uh, people, the people. Oh, are my amazing. God. Uh, so I love Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico so is, much. Is, is phenomenal. Uh, I followed him a little bit, and uh, I had the risotto they make there. Is, uh, every restaurant, I did not have a bad meal. Mm -mm. So we do the event. He's there for an hour and a half because he had to go do things, but sure. it was great. The lines were incredible. We sold so much product, uh, sold out of product. Did Lou teach you how to sell cigars? No, oh, yeah. Lou couldn't carry my jock strap if his life depended on it. Uh, so, so we go hunting. Lou likes to go yeah. to events and tell people how to sell their cigars. We go hunting the next day for iguanas. There are nooses there, but he, he's just a hunter, he likes to go uh -huh. hunting. So we go up these, and we were in, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know if you can uh, cuss here, but it's uh, Buck Fup, yeah. whatever, not, not the same. What do they call them? Garajo then? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were far. Yeah. And then the, it's funny, the, uh, his bouncer, the security guy, says, okay, guy from here on, no one's going to know you. This is the hills, the country, nobody knows. So we stop at a little gas station, get some snacks, water to, to keep hunting. And as soon as we walk in, they go on the counter, oh my God, that's Guy Fieri. Oh my God, can I take a picture? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, I think you know, nobody's going to know what, uh, what, you know what I mean? I can't go from here to the corner without, without somebody knowing this guy. And he likes that, by the way. Okay. He, he likes the, the, when the timing's right. Yeah. It, it, it if, got, it's it, got to it, get it, old. It, it, it gets old, but if he's on, on the phone, because he's a huge family man, huge. You know, he's on the phone with either his wife or his, or his kids or whatever, yeah. you know, he drops everything. And, yeah. and he should. Yeah. yeah and he For should. Sure. So, so, but we've kind of, uh, you know... Uh, we're very similar. We're both alpha dogs. Yeah. We've uh, butted heads uh, yeah. some in a good way. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 doing an event and uh -huh. he's signing, and I'm signing the boxes and some guy. Hey, Eric, I love your shark. Can I take a picture with you? And nothing with him. And I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Well, uh, another guy, just coincidental. The only two guys. You had 300 people. The only two guys, and it was back to back. Hey, Eric, can I get a picture of you and your shark? And I look at him. I said, one day I'm gonna make you famous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know I mean? So let, let me let me ask you this. Out of all the cigars you've made, what cigar didn't get the praise it deserves? You know, that, that I, uh, I can't tell you that. I can't answer that question because the ratings we get in Cigar Aficionado. Now, I did a bad cigar, which I, I, I didn't care for it. Um, and it was uh, because I had to make it. You're for, putting out hundreds reasons. of cigars. It's but no, happen. it was one that uh, back in the day because I had to use the, the Jamaican tobacco. I did one called Reggae and all that, which I personally didn't care. It did well, uh, but I didn't yeah, care for it. It did well, but I have the you know, uh, uh, you know, even Cigar Aficionado uh, uh, gives me great ratings. I, I've never had a bad rating. What 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 about your? What what do you think is the best cigar you make? In your personal opinion, what do you like the best? The Laurent. The, the Laurent is the your, that's, that's my your. Baby. That's my baby. That's my baby. I mean, we couldn't make it for a year and a half because we, we couldn't get the wrapper. Uh, um, because of COVID, they stopped growing it, and it's going to be I got all time. of your prototypes, and guess yes, what? People yeah, fucking yeah, love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Lou yeah, Liga yeah, cigar yeah, in his lounge, yeah, that's yeah, one of the prototypes. Yeah, yeah. That's a Havana yeah, version. That's a Havana version. And then you gave me yeah. a box press version that I used in something else. Yeah, yeah what, because what? what came about of that was we had to change. Um, I wanted to, because AJ was telling me, listen, if, if you change the wrapper, put this wrapper on it, it's going to taste the same. Yeah. And we tried it. And I told my son, what do you think? No, Dad, we're not lying to nobody. We're not going to make the cigar. Yeah. So we did do some that you have with 
same blend, but it's a different Habano wrapper, you know. It, 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 hey, you've been a dream come true right, for, right, for Habano. You, you know. And I want to thank you for no, that. No, I, I thank you for what you do. I mean, uh, the army you have is phenomenal. Everywhere I go, I do an event and, uh, you know. But it's uh, uh, your it's, army, uh, too, because well, these people I, I, are I, I, they I, came I, from I, your I, camp I, or they I, know I, you, they I, love I you. I appreciate it. I'm on a plane and I'm walking into the plane and I see a guy with Pravada. And, of course, I look and all this and then I start talking to the guy. And, um, oh, you're a Pravada member? And then he looks at me and he goes, oh, my God, are you Eric Espinosa? <laughs> yeah. And that was unbelievable. Yeah, so, and he was a cool dude. I, I forget where I was at because I had travel. And, and then um, they start boarding. He goes, look, uh, he goes, look, uh, uh, it was a pleasure meeting, but, uh, you know, I got to get on a plane. I'm in first class. I said, yeah, buddy, me too. I'm, uh, <laughs> he tried uh, yeah, to one-up yeah, yeah. one yeah, I said, yeah. I said, yeah, me too, buddy. I mean, you know. Uh, and then I'm in the first row, and he's uh -huh. like in the third. I, I go, how's it feel to sit back there? I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it was all in good. It was yeah, all in yeah, fun. I gave him a couple of cigars, and, and, wow. and you know, yeah, what a great guy, it, man. It, it, it was cool. I mean, you, you, you are such a shining example of a brand owner of a of a cigar maker. Um, I'm imagining that obviously you put in that work, you hustle, and you're here to feed your family. But I'm imagining that one of the things that's kept you going is that community that you've built. That and my son, and um, I, I don't like to fail. I, 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 nothing I do in life, I, um, I still, I'm 55 years old, I still play softball. If you find somebody who likes to lose, I'll show you a loser. I don't like to lose in anything I do in life. If, if one thing, and actually, my son taught me this, and my son's th only 30. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna do something, you do it the right way or you don't do it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'll tell you a quick story. Guy asked me for some cigars and a couple of shirts. I box it up and I, I send it out. And he opened it up in Instagram. And then my son shows, look that. He goes, so look, look that. And he shows me the guy opening up. He goes, what do you see? I said, he's opening up the box. No, look at it closely. And I'm like, what? He goes, look, look how neat that box is. I said, yeah. Now, I know I would never pack it neat because right. I don't give a shit. I'll throw it in there. He goes, I, when I knew it was for Guy Fieri, I went behind you and I repacked it because you never know what's going to happen. And that's when it all really made sense because sometimes people tell you things, but it doesn't sure, hit you. Of course. And that's when it really hit me. And that's why we didn't do the LaRange, okay? I, a, I wasn't going to lie to nobody. But if we're going to do something, you either do it right or you don't do it. Yeah. Or, or you don't do it at all. Okay, because I learned at 55 years old, money's not everything, okay? No. It, it, it helps, not. but with everyone, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners have had a lost family member due to COVID or due to whatever. And the biggest thing I have in my life is family. And that's what I'm all about. And I, I want to leave something for my son. Before, I didn't care about a legacy. I didn't give a, care yeah. what people thought. I'm dead. What do I care what people think about me? Right. But now, as you get older, you start changing yeah. And, you know, and, and I want people to remember me as, hey, stand up. You can't, you can't buy the guy. And, and, and I want my son to be, you know, the same way. And he is. Yeah. And I'm going to be a grandfather, by the way. Really? In, in a couple months. Congratulations, yeah. my bro. A little bit, a baby girl. Wow. And um, okay. he's, not gonna go, he's not going to go to the show, so he's, he's a little nervous about that. And I always talk to him, you know, I've never been a dad. And neither was I. And look what you, look what I, yeah. you came out. It, it'll come yeah. to you, man. Oh, he's a great I, kid. I can, I can guide you, and you ever have questions, you ask me. But you, you, you're going to do, you're going to be fine. You know what I like about your son? What's that? Is that um, he's not afraid to be himself. No. No, he's all. not trying to be you. And he's not in the limelight. I, I like that. He doesn't like the limelight. Right. He's been with Jay Z, pictures with Jay Z, right. Billy Joe. He's never posted it. Right. He's a kid at, at 12 years old. I, I, we went to a charity event, and the first guy he sees is Jay Z. Never ever posted it. Has no idea what those pictures are, nor does he care. Right. I don't give a yeah, shit. No, nor does he care. He's I mean, a real one. Do for you sure. know what, what uh, he goes to school and tell everybody I was with Jay Z? Never did that once. Not one time. You know, and that's what I like about him. He's not starstruck. He's not, you know, him and Guy butt heads because I, I, his middle name is Dylan and he hates that middle name because back in the day that 90210 was. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah. And it's funny how life works. You know, yeah. one of our biggest fans is uh, Ian Ziering. You know, Ian Ziering, Sharknado, he, uh, the guy who did the Sharknado. 
He he was in 90210 Beverly Hills. Do you remember that? Oh no, I didn't know. Okay, you know what that is? Yeah, of course. I the, the, guy with the, the guy with the guy with Steve, the guy with the blonde hair. Yes, okay, yeah, I've seen him. I it, saw it, him out in LA. I I I in Zeri, and he's a huge fan of our cigars. Really? Yeah, and that was one of my favorite show, so that's why I named him Dylan. <laughs> and he hates that name. So God called him, hey Dylan. And then <laughs> and, and, and guy hates when people pronounce his name wrong. Which by the way, it, it's Fieri. It, it, yes, it's Fee and then Eddie. Fee, Eddie. Yes. But Fee, Fee, Fury. People call him Fury. So yeah. go, yes, Mr. Fury. Uh, you I know, saw the it, dude on bar still do that and he got pissed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So he was like, it's Fee, Eddie. Yeah, it's Fee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, man, I'm, I'm just so honored and blessed to have you in my camp. Mm -hmm. And I sure. wanted to give the people a little bit more of, um, that haven't met you in person, a little bit more of, that thing that you bring to the table, and I think it came through very well in this interview. Uh, and I'm grateful that you come here. I'm grateful that you work with me. Um, and I know that our members are just so thrilled with what you've contributed to the Pravada legacy. And I can't thank you enough, and I'll always do everything I can to support you. And I want to say for the record that uh, we were kind of put in a situation once where I could easily see where you would have doubted me, and you did not. You took me at face value, and I will never forget that. I appreciate that. I, appreciate I will that. never forget that. I appreciate that. But I want to thank all your listeners out there, and you know, keep supporting the brand, and keep. Uh, now I got a granddaughter. I gotta buy a bunch of stuff for her and stuff like that. <laughs> now nah, I'm just joking. I mean, I, I want everyone to try my cigars at least once. Sure. But the right one. Because if you like mild, don't go out and get a, a, a one of my full body cigars. Or don't you know if you like medium, don't get a mild or, or vice versa. I think your get Connecticut one, is is a fantastic the, the, Connecticut. The Creme is one of the best. No, no one talks about it, but it's a every time it, I light it, it up, I'm like, it, why isn't everyone talking it, about it, this cigar? It, it, it does phenomenal. It really does. They talk about brulee. They talk about this. They talk about Uncle Paulie. But I'm like, yo, this guy's got a phenomenal Connecticut shade. It's um, I think it's one of the best Connecticut out there, but. Listen, we're building our name, and uh, uh, little by little, I'm not in no rush. I, I enjoy what I do, because if you love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life. I Amazing, enjoy what right? I do, and um, we're going to keep pounding the pavement, and and uh, hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. That's that's our model. That's our song. That's our company song, so. I love it. You know? Well, thank you again. Thank, thanks for having me. Hashtag, ah, you know what? Hashtag Cigar Public. It went live today. 601. 601. Yeah. Okay, we got now you we have here. That in common again. This is <laughs> going to go on the website hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Um, I think this is uh, an opportunity for cigar media to, or for this, what I'm calling, and, and you know, I, I'm curious how you feel about it, but I'm calling this the, the Pravada wave more or less a third wave because we had the boom of the 90s, then we had the boutique boom. And now we're, we're going into a different uh, territory here over the last four years. It's a, more of what I call a craft culture because they want to know more about you. They want to know more about the products you're using. They want to know uh, the story behind the cigars. And they're extremely passionate and they want to be educated on what they're into. And, and that's, those are the people that smoke my cigars. I mean, there's I, no I, doubt. I, I can't get the golfer who doesn't really know anything about know. cigars who goes in and buys a box of X Y Z and, and for five hundred dollars. Uh, uh, yeah, right. No, I, I, and it's I, not I half mean, the and, cigar. And, and, and that the truth making. is, I don't want those guys right. because those guys are gonna do absolutely nothing for me. I want the guys that that, that really, you know, are passionate about it, who uh, um, write about it, who talk about it, uh, who post about it. Yeah. And that's how we build our business. And, and and not for nothing, but social media is crushing cigars. It's uh, it, it, they're crushing cigars. They're they're they, they're algorithming us out of the game. I used to get thousands of comments sometimes on my post. I'm down to eight comments. It's just it's just the way it is. Yeah. This is why social cigar public and right. cigar public are so important because anyone can write an article as long as it's coherent. We'll have an editor look at it, but you know your voice can be heard, and that's what's so important about it. And, it's somewhere um, to go that you can uh, relate to and, 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 you know, and, and, and build that community. Absolutely. My man, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, brother.